everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am so excited for today's video. Today I am going to play with a new to me yarn base, sort of. I'll explain more about that in a moment. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Mariana and I am so excited to create some beautiful yarn for her. Today we are going to use Wool to Die For's Platinum Sock. But Rebecca, you have used this specific 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon sock yarn blend many, many times before. And that is true, I have. But what is different today is the preparation of this skein. Da 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 da! I have bought the six meter skeins. Let's open this up for a little unboxing. Um, hopefully these come, oh dear. With a lot of top, oh gosh. Please, oh no. <laughs> I don't know why that went so poorly. <laughs> that bag of five, three of them are somehow stuck together. I'm gonna have to untangle that. But these two, the two from Mariana, are perfect, so we can proceed. Um, these skeins are super long. So if we compare one of these six meter skeins to a normal one, they are almost four times as long, which means that you can get some awesome striping or really like spread out some pops of color. And that's what we're gonna do today. I added on some nylon zip ties and I am pre-soaking the yarn in plain tap water for 30 minutes before we start our dyeing. In my 12 quart pot, which is my larger dye pot, I have 16 cups of tap water and I'm going to add one cup or approximately 240 milliliters of a 1% stock solution of Derma True Black. This is my favorite, favorite black uh, that I've tried thus far. Pot is still cool, and as I am stirring it, I'm sort of wiping off the, the splashes on the sides. And then I'm coming in with a paper towel and sort of wiping that little bit off because we are going to dip dye part of our yarn in this today. At least that's the attempt. <laughs> Again, there is no acid in here yet and I'm starting to place our yarn in here. Starting because I'm leaving an end out and let's see if I'll be able to show this. Okay, so I've got the two ends over here and I am placing the ends over this sort of spoon. And I'm trying to decide if I want to wrap it a little bit. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that I want just that pop of color. Okay, so I'm slowly lowering this down. Where's my spoon? I do want to stir this a bit. It's not going to be a solid um, because there's not a ton of space, but I want it to be uh, like a tonal semi-solid color. And then, hmm, I'm debating, okay, the plan, see I have this higher up. I kind of want, shoot, how am I going to do this? I got a new zip tie and put it through the tops of the two and I am going to place that around the handle of my microwave. And it's a little too high right now. Um, Okay, it's a little too high, but that is okay with me, and then I can use this to move it over to the side. So I am going to lower this 
a bit and then there so I have a zip tie through my two zip ties to keep it up out of the water and I'm gonna go and try to even all that off okay it looks like the amount that is outside is about the same so I'm now going to turn on the heat and we want to add some vinegar carefully I'm gonna add vinegar so we have 16 cups of water and I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar right now um, we can add more later but I'm sort of just carefully strain this around I really don't want things to end up getting tangled down there um, there's not currently vinegar in like the spot that's up here I'm not gonna worry a ton I imagine I don't know. We'll, we'll worry about that as we as time goes on but I'm now going to let this slowly heat up and we'll check back in in I think 15 minutes it's been 15 minutes and we're getting some steam but we're not even quite up to temp um, the color you know the color is absorbing though which is good sort of moving things around moving things around okay and I'm gonna keep an eye on it cuz I don't want the heat to ever get too high but we'll come back in I think 30 minutes after 30 minutes the water is looking rather clear there might still be a hint of color so I don't exactly want to dip in our white end, but I am going to add three and four tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm actually sort of splashing this more charcoal gray area, flip it over with some of this vinegar water just so that way uh, maybe it can set a little bit. But I'm going to turn off the heat and let things cool off here in the pot, at least for a while. I will probably remove, um, after a little bit, the yarn from the zip tie. I'm still leaving the white yarn out of the water, but uh, set it aside somewhere so it can cool. For the next stage, I've got about two-thirds of a cup of water, one tablespoon of white vinegar, and I am now coming over with our yarn that we dyed before. So I'm gonna remove the tie that's holding the ties together and also loosen these ties. And now I'm gonna take our yarn, just this edge of the yarn, and dunk it into this vinegar solution. I am doing this because although the black did have vinegar and is still acidic, um, the white end never really interacted with some vinegar and so I just wanted to quickly dunk it in some vinegar water so that way when we go ahead and hand paint this yarn we can take advantage or we can have it be acidic enough that it shouldn't be that we should be able to get good color okay I'm now trying to arrange these together let's see about actually the length um, between these is like a really good size and they're really comparable my work surface is protected and I have added plastic wrap here so that way um, I can wrap this up to go ahead and steam set it and we are going to play with some fluorescent colors today oh dear that is bright and by bright I mean it is orangey this is a fluorescent lemon oh dear may have been a little more pigmented maybe I should have diluted it that's okay it will glow it will glow I'm going to flip this over and add some of our glow to this other side as well. But I am working that color 
through. Next, I have a 1% stock solution of Dharma Radioactive. Uh, this color is awesome and also can be quite, quite vibrant. I think that the colorway I am going for with this edge is sort of a neon, uh, a neon version of one of my favorite winter hats. Um, and so the radioactive and the fluorescent lemon, again, are fluorescent. So we should see them under a black light. Okay, and finally, in this last section, I've got what is not a fluorescent blue, but looks like a neon blue in the color Frozen. This is one of my all-time favorite colors um, with acid dyes. I just wish that it could glow in the dark. And by glow in the dark, I mean fluoresce under a black light. Ooh, I like what it's doing over the radioactive and that teal that it is creating. Um, I'm going to bring the frozen up a little bit onto this more gray tone right here. And so I want something that feels modeled. Um, I want these colors that are hand painted to feel less even um, than like the blacks. And so that's one of the reasons why sort of going into it like this. Oof, I like that when the blue over it laps, it turns this really nice green. Um, I need to wipe my hands. And so this should just be a fun like pop of color that depending on how these are knit may or may not pool or may sort of shift around for something real like micro stripe-esque. Okay, I'm gonna take a little more of the yellow and bring some of that onto the radioactive and vice versa. Bring a little bit of the radioactive onto that yellow. Sort of blending the colors a little bit more. Uh, I might do a little bit more blue onto our green. And again, these colors, I'm trying to have it be as matched as possible between the two skeins, but it will not be perfect. Um, but I think that the overall size between the two should be pretty good. I mean, this isn't gonna be matched or symmetrical, but um, the two skeins should be pretty darn close to one another. So now I am wiping up some of this excess dye and we're gonna wrap up to steam set. I don't swatch very often because I believe that the type of yarn that you get when you swatch will vary significantly depending on the technique and the colors and all kinds of factors like that. However, with something that is self-striping like this, I think that is helpful for me as well to get a sense of how big are the stripes and things like that. So I am just folding this up into a little jelly roll and I'm gonna go place this in a steamer basket. The steamer basket isn't super warm yet, um, but I did set the yarn off to, that I just hand painted off to one side and the rest of the black off to the other, trying to keep them separate as possible. Theoretically, we could have left the black out of the pot entirely, but I don't know, I worry about burning yarn and stuff, so I decided to fit it all in the pot. Okay. But the lid fits on, and that is what is important. 
Uh, once the pot gets actually kind of steamy, then I am going to steam this for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I just turned off the heat, uh, removing the lid, and now we're going to let this cool a bit before I remove the yarn and take a closer peek. At this stage, if you wanted to just remove it and set it in another container, you could, or you can just leave it in the steamer basket to cool. Let's take a look at this ooh, neon ah, segment as I drop the rest. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm trying to get the plastic wrap off. Oh wow, that yellow looks vibrant and neon and does not look orange. I was concerned, why can't I, there we go. I was concerned at first because it was looking so orange to me that it was not gonna feel like that highlighter yellow pop that I wanted, but this is gorgeous. And so short compared to the rest of the yarn. I am so excited, so, so excited. I mean, just look at that bright pop um, next to all of this black. And I'm not seeing any bleeding. So that is great. I'm now gonna add, it is some green dish soap just to check to see where we are bleeding wise, but it's looking pretty good. So I'll pop back if I notice some bleeding come out. So otherwise, I'm going to rinse out the soap, uh, put the yarn through the spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll take a look before it becomes time to restain it. But yeah, that's looking great. Mariana, this yarn is so awesome. Again, this probably isn't really going to be self-striping. In a sense, there will definitely be some stripes of black, depending on what this yarn turns into. Let's say it's going to turn into socks. Then you would definitely see a big section of black, and then every once in a while you'd get this, probably it would feel like a micro stripe of these vibrant colors. I'm not sure if it's long enough to be a whole round around a sock, but I think it is so, so fun. And I really want to play with this more in the future. Taking a look at the colorful area of both skeins, they are reasonably well matched. Uh, still, I always say you might want to like alternate skeins or whatnot, but the size of them is pretty darn close. Um, I think if I used guar gum, I could maybe get a bit closer, but I don't think I've like secured yarn to something and left it in a pot like this before. And so I am really really pleased with how this turned out and I'm really excited to play with this more as well. I really wanted to twist these up in some kind of pretty way to just show that pop of color at the end next to the length of the skeins but it's a lot to twist. These are nine meter skeins uh, and it's just fun. It's nice that you can purchase them this big um, but where the real effort is going to come in this time is winding these into a more appropriately sized skein that could say fit on a nitty knotty. So what I'm going to do is stretch this across the back of two of my chairs in my living room, walk around in between them, uh, winding this onto a nitty knotty. Uh, this is similar to what I did when I made my own really, really long skein in Dye Put Weekly number 100. Um, but I will be back and show you what this looks like re-skeined. I've also talked about in the past that in general I'm not a fan of re-skeining yarn, except for when you need to, like using a really long skein like this, or you have a blank, or a yarn cake, or something like that. I prefer to look at a skein of yarn and see how it was dyed because that gives me a sense of the type of colorway that it is, whereas Yarn that has been reskeined can look very, very similar even when the lengths of the color repeats are really different. How cool does this yarn look reskeined? But here is sort of my point. You can tell that there's a lot more black than there are other colors and that there are longest stretches of these neon colors. 
But what you can't tell is how frequently the neon comes up. And just looking at the skein, you don't know if you have a neon thick stripe, but fairly infrequent or what. And so that's why um, for self-striping yarns, I do like to provide some kind of swatch at the end of my video. And normally I'm not able to swatch, but today I will share a swatch. But this yarn is seriously special. When I was winding it onto the Nitty Nutty, at first I was standing in the middle of the circle and spinning around a lot. <laughs> and it was working well except I started to get dizzy. So I stepped outside the circle and then I was able to do it without turning as much. <laughs> oh, Rebecca. <laughs> I thought it would be less likely to get tangled if I was in the middle, but really that wasn't necessary. Here is our swatch. I made this swatch on US size 2 or 2.75 millimeter knitting needles. I knit 40 stitches across in stockinette. And you can see that we have these stripes of our contrasting color. There are about nine rows of black in between each row of our bright contrasting color, which really, really pops. Now, this is, you know, a flat swatch, 40 stitches across. So if you were knitting in the round with more stitches, there would be less space in between. But you will definitely have black stripes uh, with these pops of color that will feel like a micro stripe, even though even with 40 stitches, it just barely goes all the way across. The reverse stockinette side looks pretty awesome as well. I think it's a little easier to see on the reverse side how the colors kind of keep shifting over to one side so they aren't going to hit in the same place each time which honestly would be perfect if these micro stripes sort of spiral around the outside of a sock or something i think it would just be so fun for this colorway today i was inspired by the colors i picked for my favorite winter hat and i actually think that i nailed it Mariana, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I hope that you're going to love the yarn as much as I do. I am really, really obsessed with how this came out. I mean, it is just stunning. And I am really excited to play around more with these six meter long skeins that I bought from Wool to Dye For. I think that there's a lot of things that you could do and it'd be fun. Now that I sort of have a sense of how like big the stripes are, then I'm like, oh, okay, maybe it would be good to try this with two colors. I mean, clearly it would be good to do with two colors. Many more, it might not be quite long enough, but I have a few more of them and I'm just really excited to play. If you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can find a link to the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop in the video description and iCard. While you're at it, go ahead and check out the rest of the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There are so many skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in my videos, and there might still be some slots for the 2019 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Uh, starting on December 22nd, each night after sunset, Eastern time at least, there will be a new yarn dyeing video. And if you get the sampler, you can unwrap a mini skein of yarn that was featured in that video each night. And so then you can experience these videos on a whole new level when you can touch, play with, swatch the different colors from eight different techniques on eight different nights. Can you guys guess what day I am filming this conclusion? Hmm, I don't know, but anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.